Welcome to Biblical Greek. In today's lesson, we're going to discuss the Greek alphabet. A little bit of the history, but then we're going to spend some time actually learning how to write the Biblical uh, Greek alphabet, the Koine alphabet, and also how to pronounce each of them. So just a quick bird's eye view of the history, the development of the Greek alphabet. If you remember when we talked about the stages in the development of Biblical Greek or Koine Greek, we talked about four groups of people, uh, the Achaeans, the Ionians, the Dorians, and the Aeolians that came uh, between 2000 and 1000 BC. Uh, they migrated into that uh, Greek peninsula and they interacted and sometimes even subdued and drove off the local indigenous population. Uh, and this, this became what we know today as the Greek-speaking people. Uh, the, to begin with, the Achaeans. Uh, they moved down somewhere around or after 2000 BC uh, and they sort of destroyed or dispersed the Minoan civilization that was living in Crete, that island of Crete uh, below Greece. And um, through some of that fusion came the Mycenaean civilization, the Mycenaean people, uh, between 1500 to 1200 BC. And they had their own script. Uh, the technical name of that script is Linear B. Okay, it's also uh, a descendant of Linear A, which was in that Minoan civilization is very hard to decipher. And there are scholars that who have been working on this Linear A, Linear B script for, uh, for decades. And uh, it's very, very fascinating. But nonetheless, uh, the Mycenaean civilization, 1500 to 1200 BC, had what we know as the Linear B script. Uh, it is made out of pictographs, 90 some pictographs. So each letter looks like, just like the hieroglyphs in Egypt, the, the Egyptian alphabet, it, it looks like s some figure. And based on that, we know it's this letter and then this sound. But then in 1000 uh, BC, the Greeks began to get away from that pictographic alphabet and they started adapting the Phoenician alphabet. Now keep in mind the Phoenician alphabet is also the progenitor to the Hebrew alphabet. Now there are some scholars who disagree and they claim that the Hebrew alphabet came first and then the Phoenician, okay? Uh, so keep that in mind. But nonetheless, uh, it's, um, it was an adaptation of the Phoenician alphabet that became, uh, now we're headed towards what we uh, are going to call the Greek alphabet. Somewhere around the 5th to the 6th century BC, the Ionians, they developed uh, what we now know as the Greek alphabet, which was um, later perfected and used by the Athenians, okay? And uh, it became the Attic script, uh, the alphabet of the Greek language. So just a quick history of that development from Linear B to the Ionians um, or, or Linear B to the Phoenician alphabet becoming uh, the Greek alphabet down to the Ionians and being perfected into those 24 letters that we have now uh, in the Greek alphabet, 24 letters. Uh, it, we can quickly, uh, I need to mention that uh, uh, they're just like English language, they're capital letters, and then they're small or cursives. Uh, for example, in the English alphabet, we have A, uh, and then we have A. By the way, that's very similar to an actually derivative of um, the Greek alphabet. Uh, and then we have uh, G and G. So, uh, capital, small, okay? 
So also in the Greek language, you have the capital letters, and they are called unseals, U-N-C-I-A-L-S. These are called unseals. In fact, the earliest biblical manuscripts were written in the unseal script, the capital, all capital letters uh, with no uh, space between the words, and yet people knew how to read them, okay? And then starting about the fourth century on, uh, we begin to come up with the cursives, the small letters, so, and that's known as the minuscules, the minuscules, and that's why we talk about the Greek minuscules. We're talking about the Greek manuscripts, and most of our manuscripts that we have are written in the minuscule script, okay? And then uh, the rest is um, pretty s simple. Now, let's uh, go over the alphabet. Good time to do that. Go over the alphabet. Now, here, let me give you my approach to the best way to maximize your memorization of the Greek alphabet, but also get way ahead in the game in reading the Greek script and looking up the words in the Greek lexicon. Now, typically, professors and even uh, Dr. Black and uh, the textbook that I grew up on, J.W. Wenham, uh, they tell the students to memorize the names of the alphabets. So it would be more like alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, C. So memorize the names of the alphabet. And that's good. But there's a better way. The better way is this. Memorize the sound of the alphabets. Not only are they shorter, but they're also helpful because now you not only can, you know, say the alphabet faster, just like we did back in kindergarten, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Now you can say it faster instead of alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. It, it's cumbersome. But you can say it faster, and it also helps you read. Instead of saying, okay, alpha sounds like a. Uh. No, we're going to begin with a, uh, not alpha. And not beta, but b. Not gamma, but g, or, uh, okay, just, just stick with that for right now. Uh, not delta, but d. Not epsilon, but a. So, you will see the benefit of memorizing the alphabet by uh, the sound of the letters, rather than the title of each alphabet. So let's begin. Uh. Uh. B. B. G. G. D. D. E. E. Z. Z. A. E. E. T. T. E. E. K. K. So, a b g d e z e t e k l l m m n n x 
अक्स अक्स ओ ओ फ र र स स कीप इट माइंड व्हेन इट कम्स टू स देयर इज अ स साउंड व्हेन अ लेटर व्हेन इट्स इन द मिडल और बिगिनिंग ऑफ अ वर्ड एंड देन देयर इज अ फाइनल सिग्मा व्हिच लुक्स लाइक आर एस सो स ठ ठ उ उ फी फी खी ips ips oh oh so let's go over the alphabet again a b g d ए, ज, ए, ठ, इ, ख, ल, म, न, एक्स, ओ, फ, र, स, अगेन, कीप दोस टू इन माइंड, द फाइनल एस, ठ U, F, K, P, C, O. This O and this O, Omega and Omicron, have the same sound in modern and Koine Greek. So keep that in mind. Also, the B sound in modern and Koine Greek is more like the V sound, V, than the B. V. Okay. So once again, a, b, g, d, e, z, e, t, e, k, l, m, n, x, o, p, r, s, t, u, f, k, i, p, c, o. Okay. So these are the twenty-four letters of the Greek alphabet. Some of them are consonants. Uh, most of them are consonants, few vowels, but we'll cover that later on. We'll also cover the matter of diphthongs, where two letters come together to form a sound, and we'll also cover that later. And again, there's a difference between the classical or the um, Attic spelling versus uh, pronunciation versus the modern and the Koine pronunciation for the diphthong. But th these are some of the things that we need to keep in mind. So once again, let's go over the Greek alphabet. A, b, g, d, e, z, e, t, e, k, l, m, n, x, o, p, r, s, t, u, f, k, i, p, c, o. These are the 24 letters of the Greek alphabet. So when you memorize them, okay, when you memorize them, memorize them with that sound instead of uh, doing the alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, uh, kappa, and that's fine, and we can do that. But you'll see how easy it becomes when you have to read a word. For example, I'm going to put a word up here. The word agape. Okay, let's think about the word agape. We know what the word agape means. It means love. 
Now, we know that word has the sound uh. This here, guh. This here again is uh. Of course, this, if you remember your geometry, pi, the sound is p. And this right here has the sound again, e. Agape. 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 Another easy word. Uh, think about the word logos. First letter, la. O, right here, O. Again, the word G, O, again, and then final sigma. La, Gos. La, Gos. Logos, word. Now, one more word that I want to emphasize, I'm going to erase the board for that. It's the word with two g sounds or two g letters or gammas. Here's that word. Now, if you notice over here in this word, there are two g's. How do you pronounce them? When you have that combination, the first word takes on the n sound, the n sound. Okay, this is, I want to make sure that's the English n, is what I'm saying here. The English n sound. So this is not you are guggleon, it becomes euangleon. The first letter takes on the N sound. The first G takes on the N sound. Euangelion. Euangelion. And that's very important because uh, when we read the words uh, and you come across the double G or double G sound, remember the N sound from English. Uh, that is the first letter, Leon. What is that word? Well, evangelism. Evangelism. That's where we get the word evangelism. And if you notice in the English, it's already taken the end sound. Why is that the case? Uh, because the Greek pronunciation takes on the end sound. Uh, and the rest is pretty simple. Gospel and evangelism. So, Hopefully this helps you remember uh, how to memorize the Greek alphabet. Um, repeat it again and again. And get faster if you can. Time yourself. That way when you open the lexicon, just like you open Webster's Dictionary or the Oxford Dictionary, you don't say, oh, let's see, A, B, C. Uh, by the way, English alphabets uh, can also be just like what I'm teaching you. Uh, but you can quickly go to L-M-N-O-P-Q-R-S-D. You can find the letters uh, much faster when you have the sound memorized rather than the titles of each alphabet. Hope that was helpful to you. Watch the video again and again to understand how to pronounce the, word, the alphabets and how to memorize them.